using Azure portal and use the Azure functions uh, to create change notifications in Graph API. All right. So first of all, uh, what we have to do is uh, have to just create a function app. So you can search the function app from here as well. Uh, all right. And once you have, uh, once you are there on the screen, just click on create. All right. So this kind of interface would open up. So first, you need to select the kind of subscription you want. Um, all right. Uh, then we need to create a resource group. So for this, uh, I'm just gonna create uh, my resource group. Um, RG so that uh, we know it stands for resource group. I'm just going to name it RG. All right, uh, name of the function app. All right, should be good. Yes, it is. Uh, Runtime start. We're going to select .NET version. Let it be as it is and select the nearest location. Um, right, we click on next. Um, it's going to create a storage account for us, so let's uh, leave it as it is. Uh, operating system we're going to choose as Windows, and client type we're going to give it as the serverless. Next to networking, in the networking tab, I don't think we need to make any changes. Uh, in the monitoring tab, uh, yeah, so it asks us to enable application insights. So for the production application, uh, to get more insights into the logs, I would just recommend you to enable this uh, application insight. But for our testing purpose. I don't need it, so I'm going to select no, but I'll recommend you to enable yes for your production application. Right, click, we'll click on next. So tags are not needed. Uh, I'm going to click on review and next and just click on create. So ideally this um, creation part also, I'll uh, recommend you to do this automatically using Azure DevOps. So that way you have centralized control on what all things are getting deployed and what all things are getting created. All right, so I think the function app is up and running. Uh, it will take some time for the deployment. Meanwhile, I'll just uh, go to the GitHub page and uh, download the code which we want. All right, so we are here at the GitHub page. Uh, so here's the right, it's opening. Um, yeah, there you go. So the file is opened, so this is the kind of uh, infrastructure you would get. So once you have it, you know that there are uh, two classes. Uh, one is function 1.cs where your actual code is residing, and then you have graph notification.cs. This is a separate uh, class uh, which I'm using. So I've created a separate class and that class has been used in function 1.cs, right? So if you go right from the start, um, I'll explain you what this code does. Um, so initially when you send a post request, um, post request to your webhook URL, it will check for the validation token. Uh, it would check for the validation token inside the query string. And if it is not empty, it will, it will send the 200 OK uh, as a response that, yeah, my notification URL is healthy. So that is the response it's going to send. So once uh, Graph knows that the notification URL is he uh, healthy, um, it tries to listen to the changes uh, from whatever resource you have subscribed to. So let's suppose tomorrow um, you get a notification that some uh, message in your inbox. So this gets activated again. Uh, it checks for uh, validation token. It sends 200 OK that your notification URL is healthy. Uh, then it checks for the request body. It checks for the request body, and once the request body has some content, has some content, uh, the request body has some content, then it tries to deserialize it. Once the object is deserialized, it is stored inside data. And then all the data related to your webhook are stored inside data objects. So once you have all the data inside uh, this particular object, uh, you just iterate through each object using the for each loop. All right. So before. So once you once the data has been iterated, OK, uh, it checks whether the data the client state of the data matches the secret values. So 
this is a kind of secret we use uh, when you create notification. All right, um, so it has to match this particular string value with the value which you have inside uh, the body when you create the subscription. So let me explain you in detail. Uh, if I go to Postman and um, create the subscription, okay, so I need to create the subscription and this notification URL doesn't exist yet. Uh, we need to get this notification URL. So till now what we have done is we have just uh, created the function app uh, in Azure portal, but uh, we have not deployed that particular code here. So what we're going to do is uh, once we have this code ready up and running, uh, we have to right click on uh, the function app and click on publish. Ideally, you would do this through Azure DevOps by checking in this code and um, deploying it through the pipelines. But for testing purpose, uh, we are just directly doing it through Visual Studio. So once you have it, it will ask you to ask you to identify the Azure function where you want to deploy it. So click on publish, select the publishing profile, uh, select Azure function app. Once you have it, uh, select the resource group. You need to sign in with the same account. All right, so once we have uh, the function app uh, created, all right, so you have to start the function app if it is in stop state, uh, just play, uh, start, all right. Uh, so once you have it, just click on, uh, so this is our code base, uh, just click on publish and you'll have the screen. So once you have uh, the screen, uh, just click on publish again and uh, we'll go to the Azure function portal, uh, just select the resource group. So this is our resource group right now. Okay, and click on finish. It will deploy our app to that particular publishing profile, right? So once you have selected this, uh, your resource group, click on publish. So this is the name of a function app. If you match it with uh, this, does that, and yeah, it is asking if you want to automatically publish. I selected yes. So yeah, it's connecting to the publishing target and it should publish in a while. So we'll wait for our app to get published here. Uh, it would appear here. Once the publishing is done. Meanwhile, if you look at the code, uh, the name of a function would be graph notification hook. Okay, it's deploying graph notification hook and the authorization level is anonymous. That means anyone can call this uh, URL, uh, the public URL, which we are going to use for graph. Right, so it should. Our app should get published once we have that. So it is still publishing. Meanwhile, we'll keep our uh, postman up and running. So here's the notification URL which we have to replace with the one which we have. And if you notice in our code, um, we have this client state secret. So we just have to use this particular secret uh, over here. So you have to make sure that uh, this particular secret is matching what you have in your code. So that that defines that uh, no one else can listen to your notification uh, because you have this client secret state value and you would be the only one who would be knowing it. So this is what um, and I'm going to change the date to tomorrow. OK, so the expiration date is for tomorrow and I'm going to listen to this user's mailbox. OK, and so this is what it is messages and this is my GUID. OK, users GUID. So, so once I'm still waiting for the app to get published here. Let me go back and come back. Uh, it should appear here. There you go. So we have our graph notification webhook up and running so type of webhook is HTTP. So if you go to the code and test section. First of all, you won't be able to see the code because um, we have used uh, published profile using uh, XML. So that's the reason we're not able to see it. But if you can look at the function.js, it says the type of trigger is HTTP trigger and authentication level is anonymous. OK, and type of method allow is get post, but we in this case we only need post. All right, uh, now this is where you will get the function URL. So I'll just copy this function URL and use it here. So once we have it, we just have to get the request access token. 
it right so i've got the access token i'll just click on send and this would create yeah there you go so our subscription is created for this resource so i'm just gonna go and i'm just gonna open my outlook and meanwhile uh, i'll just keep this uh, window open in console so i'll get the logs which are there okay so this is connected okay i've connected to my mailbox also i'm just going to compose a new mail test mail from craft web hook and i'm going to use same thing from graph webbook i'm just gonna so uh, um, i'm gonna keep this aside and uh, we'll see the notification coming in real time i'm just gonna scroll it to the left so you would see it okay i hope it is visible what happened okay let's open it okay i'll click on send so there you go there you go all our notification has been arrived so now we'll go to our notification and see if that is the notification that we were looking for i'll go to the receive notification i'll go back to postman i'll paste what i got from the webhook and uh, do a get call but for that i'll need the access token first Okay, I got the access token. I click on send. So, if you look at the subject, it is the subject which is matching what we did in our mail, right? And if you look at the body, it's matching as well. 